So we are going to talk today about trig ratios. Y'all, I love me some trig ratios, mainly because they make me feel so smart. They look so fancy and intimidating and whoa, they're not that bad because again, we're going to let the calculator do all the work. So the most important thing that you need to remember is so Katoa. What? Yes. That is the acronym that we use for our three trig ratios. We have sine, we have cosine, and we have tangent. Again, I know they sound so fancy and intimidating. They will be super simple for you guys by the end of this unit. So, so stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. Ka is cosine of any angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is toa the tangent of any angle equals the opposite over the adjacent so we use trig ratios for right triangles they are special ratios meaning special connections between the angles and the sides of a right triangle so you have three options to use you have sine cosine and tangent and then again you have basically three sides to every right triangle you have two legs you have an opposite leg and an adjacent leg and then you have a hypotenuse let's look at the triangle down here um, so if they're talking about this angle right here so this purple angle we're going to call this angle x if that's the angle that we have or we need or that we're talking about then the opposite leg of the angle is considered your O or your opposite side for your trig ratio. The leg that's touching the angle, so see how this side is touching that angle, um, becomes your adjacent leg. And then of course, always, 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 the side across from the 90 degree angle is always your hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse will never change in a right triangle, but depending on what angle you're referring to, the adjacent leg and the opposite leg can change, okay? Let's look at this yellow triangle down here. So again, here's my right angle. I'm gonna call this side A, I'm gonna call this side B, and I'm gonna call this side C. So I want you to take a second and think about it. If I asked you, what is the sign of this purple angle Z? What is the sign of the purple angle Z? Well, I know I need this ratio. So I know I need an O and I need an H in order to create a sign fraction, a sine ratio. And then I just get to use my calculator from there. So the sine of Z must equal. So I look at Z and I always just label all three parts, even though I know I only need two. So the easiest one for me to identify is the hypotenuse. So I automatically know across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So I know C is my H in this um, situation. Now across, so opposite of my angle looks like it's B. So B is my O, and then the side that's touching my angle is A. So A, in fact, is our A. So the sine of angle Z is going to be the opposite, which in this case is B, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is C. Now, I know this is all weird right now because we don't have any numbers attached to it, so we're not actually plugging it in and solving. But it's most important that you're able to first identify the pieces and the components of a right triangle so that we can indeed apply that to solving for sides or solving for angles, whichever they um, are asking of us. So make sure you're able to identify the three parts of a right triangle um, so that you're able to use your trig ratios. Okay, now let's try to actually use the trig ratios to solve the missing parts of a triangle. So remember, we have three trig ratios. We have three to choose from. So we have so sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. We have ka, 
which is cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. I guess we need equal signs here, huh? So, katoa. I don't know why I like to say toa with some sort of accent that I don't know where it's from. Okay, so obviously for all of those trig ratios, you need an angle measure and then you need um, you know, two sides. So let's say that in this yellow triangle, we are given that this angle right here is 50. We're given that this side is 16 and we are trying to find the length at the bottom down here, okay? So here we go. Again, first thing, I would label my triangle. If I know that that degree is 50, that becomes my reference point for the triangle. That means that this right here is my opposite leg. See, the legs are the two sides that have to touch the 90 degree angle. So this becomes my opposite leg. This becomes my adjacent leg. And then of course, as always, the side across from the 90 degree angle is of course always the hypotenuse. So then I look and I go, hmm, it looks like I have an H and I'm trying to find my O. So then I go back up and I look at my three options and I say, who has the O and the H in the equation? And I look, boom, I have an O and an H in sign. So that's the trig ratio that I'm gonna use. You have to know which one to use based on the information that you are given. So now it's gonna look like this. The sine of angle 50 equals my opposite side, which I don't know what it is, I'm trying to find it, over my hypotenuse, which is 16. Now, again, you're gonna let the calculator do the work, but sometimes this gets a little bit tricky for kids on like finishing it and trying to solve. Sometimes it's helpful for kids to put this over one so that they can see that they might need to cross multiply. First, I'm going to figure out what is the sine of 50. So on this type of calculator, you would just type in 50, and then do you see the sine? You see your three trig functions over here? I've got sine, cosine, and tan. So I just push sine, boom, that's my answer. That is the sine of 50. So that's my answer. But remember, I have to multiply it by 16. If you're using a graphing calculator, you're gonna push the sign button first, parentheses will pop up, and then you type in 50, you hit enter, and you will get that same answer. So this portion equals what I just showed you on my calculator, 0.76, blah, 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 blah. But now I'm trying to solve for X, so I need to multiply by 16 because I'm cross multiplying. So I'm gonna take that answer, I'm gonna multiply by 16 equals, and I'm getting 12.2. So that means that X equals 12.2. So that is how you set up a trig ratio and solve a trig ratio. Again, sometimes it's helpful to put it over one so you can see who you're cross multiplying, okay? Now we're gonna to try to kind of go backwards. What if you had the sides, but you had a missing angle. This is where a lot of kids get confused. And again, if you know how to use the calculator, you will be golden. So let's say that this is, I don't know, nine, and this distance is five, and we are trying to find this angle in between. Again, first things first, I always label my sides of my triangle. So here we go. Um, if this is my angle, um, this becomes my opposite side leg, this becomes my adjacent leg, and of course this is my right angle, and therefore across from the right angle, this nine would be my hypotenuse. So I step back, I look at my triangle, and I say, hmm, what information do I have? It looks like in this case, it looks like I have an H and I have an A. So I go and look at my three trig ratios and I say, who has an A and an H? <gasps> Do you get it? Cosine, yes. So now I know the cosine of some mystery angle, which I'm gonna find in a second, must equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, my adjacent is five and my hypotenuse is nine. Again, I know this looks weird and you're like, whoa, what is going on? How do I, am I dividing by cosine? Am I subtracting cosine? How do I get X by itself? There's a fancy button. Are you ready? 
Remember, when you're trying to solve for X, you're always doing the inverse, and there's an inverse button on your calculator for cosine. But first, you must actually do this on your calculator and figure out what that is. So first, I'm gonna do five divided by nine, five divided by nine equals, and you get some weird, crazy decimal. But then here's where the best part comes in. I'm trying to undo cosine. So what you should have on your calculator is a second button. So I'm gonna push this second button, and if you notice your three trig functions, they become inverse functions. And then you just hit the cosine inverse one, and boom, it magically gives you the answer. And so the degree of that angle, X right here, must be, ooh, sorry, that green is hard to see. I'm going back to red. Must be 56 degrees, 56.3 degrees if I was rounding. So again, your calculator is your best friend. The other thing I wanna mention that's super duper important, you gotta make sure you are in the correct mode. Calculators have different modes. You make sure you are in degree mode and not radian mode. So my calculator is in degree mode. If I wanna switch it to radian, I push radian and it will tell you at the top that I'm in radian. I don't want radian. I want degree, because we're talking about degrees of triangles and degrees of circles. So anytime you wanna make sure it does not say rad at the top, that does not mean you're rad, that means that you are in radian mode and you wanna make sure that your calculator is always in degree mode, okay? I know this is overwhelming and it sounds like a lot, but you got this. Make sure you are using a good calculator and make sure you know how to use your calculator.